All right, stay tuned. I'm about to talk about five things that I've learned since marriage. Number one, not to be selfish. Now this is something I had a, a, a problem with because it was just me. You know, I don't have any children. I didn't come, I didn't have another marriage. I didn't have children. So it never really, really had to be a team player. Like I said, it was just me. So coming into a marriage and with this children and stuff, I had to quickly learn that it's not just about me. This is not mine. This is ours. So I've learned since marriage to be a team player and not to be selfish. And that everything, everything is ours. These lights are ours. This food is ours. This place is ours. And, and one thing I, t I, will, I will tell people that's engaged, not just not to be selfish, but, and I think this is good advice. When you, when you get married, get a place together. Because there's always going to be a sense of entitlement if you're moving in the other person's place. Because they had this place long before they met you. And they like things a certain way. And now you're coming into their space. But if you get a place together, I'm not coming into your space. You're not coming into my space. It's our space together. We're, we're starting off fresh together. We're filling the cabinets together. We're filling the rooms together. This is not your place. This is not my place. It, it is our place. And that's what me and Prophet has did. We neither moved in with the other. We got the place together. And so I've learned not to be selfish. Everything is ours. All I have is ours. Because I ain't going to lie to you, like, if I saw her touch my bottle of water, I'd be like, what you doing? Go get your own. And, you know, it's certain things that that I would put on my plate. She wouldn't even put on hers, but then she want to taste mine. And, I, you know, I went, oh, you better chill. So, yeah, I had to learn not to be selfish. Like, babe, go to have some taste it. Yeah, you want some off my plate? Taste it. It's just food. Come on. I'd rather have the marriage. It's just food. Go ahead. It's just water. Go ahead, drink out my bottle, babe. That's what you want to do anyway. So I've learned not to be selfish. Number two, hear what your spouse is saying. You know, sometimes in marriage I've learned, and especially with women, I've learned that a woman will say things but not actually say what she means. And so even further learning that in marriage that how to hear what my wife is saying even though she may not say it you know just like let's say if she want me to do something with her she might not outright come and say outright say it and i don't know why but that's just i guess that's just how some women are wired and i'm learning how to hear her she might not say it might not come right out and say the thing but i'm learning how to hear her and go with the flow so that's the second thing I learned, how to hear what your spouse is saying. And then also, on the flip side, in disagreements, you have to hear what your spouse is saying as well. Because everybody wants to drive their point and prove their point in a disagreement. But I think it's important to stop and let the other one speak and hear what's on their heart. Because you got to remember they're expressing their heart. If I offended her in any way, I need to hear her heart while she's speaking. And know that I can't keep doing this because it's a, it offends her. It's something that she don't like. And she's expressing that to me. So, I can, so some things you might take as a little thing. But then to you it may be little. But understand that everybody wired different. 
So my wife, to my wife, to me it's, it's small, but to my wife it may be an offense. And so I have to understand it and I have to hear what she's saying. So we don't keep coming back to this place. Because if we keep coming back to this place, then we have not moved on. And I'm ready to move forward and go up and go higher. And not only is it important for the man to hear the woman, the woman has to also hear the man. And I want them people, I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna try to talk over you. I listen to you speak. I hear you. But then you also have to hear me. So that's what I learned. I learned how to hear what my spouse is saying. Number three, I've learned how to accept help. Now, I guess I'm one of them people that don't like to always accept help, you know, like, because there's so many people that offered to help me in the past with different things, and then you look for that help, and then that help never comes, you offer it. But then when, when people later find out that you needed help in a certain area, they'll say, well, why you ain't help? Why you ain't call me? Why you ain't and, and, and ask me for help? Why you ain't contact me? Because you always let me down in the past. So, like when when my wife, in the beginning, well, it still is the beginning, but even dating, I'm talking about dating. My wife would try to help me in certain areas, and I just I would shut it down. I'm gonna be honest with you, I would I would shut it down. She'll tell you I would shut it down, and even sometimes since marriage, I would shut it down. So I'm learn, I learn to accept help. And the Lord said to me one time when my wife was trying to help me, he said, I believe I told her this. I'm not sure, but I believe I told her this. The Lord said to me, don't stop her from helping you. I gave it to you for her to help you. And so I accept the help. She is a help me. How are you going to stop somebody whose purpose in your life is this? If you stop them from doing this and this is their purpose in your life, then you don't need them. Was, there's no other reason for them to be in your life. So, uh, God is awesome, ain't he? So I'm learning to accept help and stop being prideful and stop thinking. Because it, it's, it's really a thing of where you feel like, men, men we feel like we got, we got things under control and it'll all work out. And, but we got to learn to accept help, fellas. The fourth thing I learned since being married is I can't throw in the towel. In relationships, I've always been quick to give up, quick to throw in the towel, quick to run, because certain things I always felt like I don't have to put up with, I don't have to deal with. And so I would throw in the towel like that. I would block a person, I would block their text, block their calls, block their mama, their uncle, their cousins. I block you on social media, block everything. But since being married, I realized I can't, I can't run. Because I always felt like when things, when things didn't go my way, come on, I'm going to be honest with you. When things didn't go my way, when things don't go my way, it's time to get rid of you. And since being married, I learned I, I can't run. I can't throw in the towel. This is this is my wife. She is a she's a she's a part of me. Not only she's a part of me, she we are one. We are one. We are one. I can't run and leave the marriage when things get hard, when things don't go my way, when things get tough. I can't just run and escape. I have to stand and work things out and fight for my marriage because the, the, even the enemy knows that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if the one fall, he will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to lift him up. So the enemy want to cut off anybody that, that could help you. The enemy want to cut off anybody in your life that could strengthen you. And so... I learned that I can't throw in the towel, I can't run, I can't just give up. This is not for a little while, this is not for meanwhile, this is, this is to death do us part. So if we can't conquer little things, then we sure can't conquer big things. And I'm ready to face whatever comes our way together. So that's the fourth thing I learned since being married is. I can't throw in the towel. I can't just walk away. 
I can't just give up and be like, later for it. I'm done. Don't call me no more. I can't tell her don't call me no more. She right on the other side of the bed. You know? <laughs> but anyway, that's the fourth thing I learned since being married. Being married. The fifth thing I learned since being married is how to be one. How to be one. Because I never want to be, I never wanted to be in a marriage and then there's confusion in the house b between me and my spouse. I always wanted to be on one accord, you know. And you look, you look all through the Bible, it speaks of oneness. Adam and Eve was, God created them to be one. The Bible even speaks of how he called their name Adam. They was one. In the New Testament, we see where the Bible speaks of the Jews and the Gentiles and Jesus making one new man. We see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they're one. God likes oneness. And so even in marriage, which is a picture of Christ in the church, because Christ in the church is one. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And I've learned to be one. I don't want to ever be in disagreement with my wife and we just stay in that place. I think we can disagree on things. I think we can disagree on things, but still be in agreement that this is not going to separate us. You know, so that's that's the fifth thing I learned since being married to be one. Amen.